uh, they uh, they absorb a lot of energy in the visible spectrum and that's why they reflect the green energy which is actually in the green spectrum and that's why you can see those waves because they are green however if we go here so you can see that the green color is actually in visible uh region of a spectrum however there are like near infrared radiation that cannot be caught with like with our eye however satellites are working pretty much the same as a human eye and however they are sensors i able however their sensors are able to recognize this near infrared radiation and the logic here is pretty simple the healthy leaf that you can see here, it reflects near infrared radiation a lot and absorbs a lot of green, red, and blue energy. And the healthy leaf shows us like big difference between near infrared and red radiation. When when we look at the sick leaf or dead leaf, we see that there is like small gap between near infrared radiation and red radiation and it's pretty means uh, that a plant absorbs a lot of this near infrared radiation and it means that it's sick or dead that's something uh, that our indices showing not our one but everyone's yes like uh, in dvi in dre and others that's how they work so you can trust satellite data and from here move, we are moving yeah, Rim, could you please tell a bit more uh, about how IndiVI indexes can, how indices can help us and uh, about IndiVI in particular, right? Yep, sure. Good. So um, basically, you know, there are so many indices out there, and probably, as you know, the most commonly used one is NDVI, which shows you the overall healthiness of the crop. We're going to be digging in deeper into each index, the one that we have in the platform, and also a little bit, well, a few more that would be useful to you also, um, well, to analyze your crop. But basically, in general, all vegetation indices um, are used in order to understand what's happening uh, in your field, uh, to understand, you know, how your crop is behaving, how it's growing, starting from the plantation, you know, season down to harvesting. So we can actually understand whether there are certain problems that struck, you know, the crop. So it could be, for example, pests, disease, fungus, all sorts of problems we are able to identify. And also uh, we can understand, you know, the dynamics, what's going on in the field. We can analyze this data, not only let's say for this year or what's happening at the moment, but also for the past five years. So you will understand, you know, in time, um, how everything sort of is growing or has been growing in order also to plan your activities in advance. That's also very important. Um, in addition, by understanding, you know, the behavior of your crop, you're able to estimate your yield, and that's, of course, extremely important. And also, we are able to, uh, with the help of the indices, along with the analytics that we provide, such as, you know, soil moisture, uh, weather data, like cold stress, uh, heat stress, all of these data, you know, with a combination of indices, they are able to give you sort of the full picture from A to Z on uh, the state of your crop and what you should do, what you should not do in order to preserve the crop and make it even healthier in the area or in the fields. Um, so today's, um, as I mentioned, today's plan is to talk about the four indices that we have. So we're going to be talking about NDVI, which I mentioned, sort of it gives you the overall healthiness of the crop. We're going to be talking about NDRE and some specific use cases in order to understand when the crop um, is ready to be, uh, well, to be harvested. We're going to be talking about Reiki, um, you know, how to use it in order to understand which problematic areas uh, there are, you know, in the fields. And uh, yeah, and then we're going to conclude with NSAVI. So we're going to be digging in, as I mentioned, in detail, uh, just in a little bit. And I think now perhaps, uh, be well, I think we are ready to jump straight to the platform. Right. Uh, but before we do that, I think we're going to turn off um, our camera so you guys can have, you know, can, you know, see the picture, see our screen and also, you know, for better quality. But uh, we will try to answer your um, questions and of course so we are recording this because I know this is very important for some of you also to share it with your colleagues later on so we're going to be recording this and also posting it on YouTube so we'll share the link after the the webinar ends yeah so yeah I think we will switch off the uh, videos and we'll begin straight to well jump to the platform so right all right um, and especially that will be useful for Australia and Canada that are sleeping. Oh, Australia is sleeping right now. 
All right. So um, I believe you can see my screen, right? Yep. All right. So uh, let me then do the following. I'm going to jump straight to the platform. So for today's webinar, I have decided to show you two different plots. They are different. One is in Canada, Alberta, and the other one is actually in uh, Europe where corn is grown. So I picked these two for a reason. I'm gonna you know, uh, tell you a little bit more detail just a little bit later. But uh, just to go, you know, to start from the beginning, we use data from Sentinel-2 that offers a resolution 10 by 10 meters. And as I mentioned, you will have access to the data from 2016. So you have access to, well, five years of data in order to understand what's happening, you know, in the, uh, in the field. So in this scenario, we have, uh, you know, a field of 126 hectares. We have spring barley and the sowing date was actually pretty recent. So as you can see, uh, by the end of March, we just planted this crop and the NDVI. So let me just remove real quick the data here so it makes more sense for you guys. But basically what we are looking at is the NDVI. And as you can see, it has been pretty flat um, throughout this whole year until, well, a few weeks after we planted uh, the crop, we, we start seeing sort of, you know, uh, the NDVI starts increasing. So that tells us that the crop now, you know, is developing in the area. And if we go back, you know, uh, in time, then, uh, for example, if I pick some dates from February or from January, then I will see something as completely red. And this is the scenario. So this is from February 7th. And as you can see, the entire field is completely um, red. So just sort of to give you an idea, you know, or a background about NDVI. So NDVI is uh, the Normalized Difference Vegetation Index. It shows you, as I mentioned, this is the overall state or the healthiness of your crop. So by understanding the reflected light waves that are emitted from the plants, we can understand, you know, how healthy it is. And uh, Lena also mentioned earlier, so the green sort of areas, when you're looking at this current picture now, the, the entire field is green. So that indicates high level of chlorophyll. And that means the plant is healthy. It contains a good cell structure because it's, you know, it's actively absorbing the lights, the red lights, and it reflects that uh, near infrared and vice versa. So if the plant is um, not doing, you know, so well, then we would see something that's completely red. So red indicates two scenarios. The first scenario is, as you can see, this area is completely red uh, and like from the sowing date, well, from the beginning of this year until April, the entire area is red. So that means it's open soil. So NDVI, as you can see here, by clicking on the legend, we can understand that NDVI uh, value ranges between minus one to plus one. So um, areas that have snow, you know, sand or barren rock usually would show very low vegetation, uh, you know, value like 0.1 or even less. Um, sparse vegetation, for example, if the area contains a little bit like, let's say, um, you know, greenish color a little bit or maybe orange, uh, then the value would range between, let's say, 0.2 to 0.5. And anything from 0.6 and above would indicate, you know, uh, dense vegetation that, the, you know, the crop is good. It's doing, uh, you know, it's doing very well. In this scenario, for example, when we are looking at the current image in February, then, um, well, we can look just at the natural color. In this scenario, because this is in Canada, and as you guys might know, pretty cold in Canada uh, in February. So that would indicate that this area, as you can see, has snow. So obviously this is one of the downsides a little bit when you are using satellite data or when you're working with NDVI. So if the area contains a lot of snow, the line would be pretty much flat because we are not able to decipher uh, the values or, you know, to understand how the, the crop is behaving because it's covered with snow. So that's why the area here is pretty much pretty flat. But again, you know, starting from April and until now, the field is doing very well, as you can see here on the 26th of July. Now, the other field, which I showed you earlier, which is corn, the scenario is a little bit different. So that's why I wanted also to show you this field. This one, we have corn, as I mentioned, the sowing date was in the beginning of April. And um, as you can see here, the scenario does not resemble like the one in Canada. And that is actually, there is a reason behind this. 
So we just planted this in April, but the NDVI kind of was not flat as it was, you know, in the field in Canada. Because if you, for example, click on the 14th of March, you will see that the area is orange. And if you remember, when we have something uh, like, you know, sparse vegetation, when the value ranges between 0.2 to 0.5, that that means that the area, you know, contains wheat. And that's why the NDBA was not really flat, but it's kind of like we, we have some activities going on, but that is actually wheat in the area. And if, for example, you click on February, then of course we will see something completely red because that would indicate open soil. So that's why it's very important to put the right sowing date and also to know the kind of crop that you're dealing with in order to understand the tendency, the you know, the tendencies and also to interpret the data that you're seeing in the platform. Um, yeah, so I would say that, you know, NDVI in general, of course, um, you know, is a great tool and a great indicator to show you, you know, the health of the crop. Uh, but uh, and again, of course, uh, if there are some certain, you know, areas where, let's say, some there are some red spots, hypothetically speaking, uh, let's say there are some red spots here and there in the field that that would indicate a certain problem. And of course, the earlier you identify those red spots that could indicate a disease or pest or fungus, the more you can maximize, you know, the canopy size. So that would give you, you know, higher yield at the end. And this is what, you know, everybody is aiming for. Um, so, yeah, I would say this is uh, for NDVI. Um, now, um, yeah, yeah Reem, uh, just one question from me here. So you're saying that farmers should check NDVI level at least like every three or five days, you know, to follow the changes. And I'm wondering if I'm a farmer and I have like hundreds of fields or even a hundred of fields. So do I have to check at all of them? Um, sure. That's actually a good question. So the thing is, uh, we have a lot of clients uh, and each, you know, client can, you know, has fields scattered across, let's say, Brazil or Argentina or, you know, other parts of the world. Of course, you have two options here. Either you can do the old, you know, fashionable way where you can just go to every field every single day and check the state of your uh, of your field. Or you can go to our field leaderboard tab. And in the field leaderboard, basically, we will be able to see uh, the fields, uh, all the fields, um, and you can filter them out by value change or by index value, by crop type, uh, by group type. So you can, of course, when you're adding fields in the platform, you have the option to, uh, you know, uh, categorize each field, put them maybe, you know, in different countries or, uh, you know, in, um, in different categories. It's up to you to decide, really. But basically, we will be seeing something that, uh, for example, if we have here sudden drop in value, so red, this is something that you will need, you know, to uh, to check definitely. So you can click on open, and the platform will take you straight to that field, and you will study uh, the field in detail in order to understand what's the the reason behind the sudden drop. Let's say, for example, of 0.4. So that could indicate perhaps really um, maybe a certain problem that really struck the field and would require immediate attention. But of course, if you're checking some green values like these ones, this is something that you would want to see definitely. So that would tell you that, yes, you know, the field is doing really great. And uh, there is also actually another thing. So you get email notifications about these, uh, you know, these sudden changes in values, regardless if it's a plus or minus. So uh, the notification email uh, will be sent and we it will show you that. Well, first of all, it's going to show you two pictures the most recent picture and the one before it, prior, let's say, to the one that's uh, been taken, let's say, two days ago. So you're going to see the changes. If it's a plus, that's a good thing. If it's minus, again, you will need to go and um, check the field in detail. So uh, yeah, that's for NDVI, I would say. But now, uh, probably, I will talk also about NDRE just real quick because uh, Lena will be covering a little bit more NDRE in detail. But basically, NDRE is uh, will allow you sort of to detect the very different variations in the health, let's say, of crops. Again, these indices could be used for different crops, for example, cereals like wheat, uh, spring barley, corn, maybe oil seeds like sunflower, uh, cotton, plantation crops, even tea, coffee, rubber, or even other uh, crops. Uh, like we have a lot of clients, you know, who work with sugarcane, so it could be used also for sugarcane and tobacco. 
But uh, yeah, so for MDRE, as I mentioned, um, it's able to detect these different variations, especially in the later stage. Uh, it so sort of highlights, you know, the shows you the high biomass crop and also permanent trees crop as well, if you're using them. Um, so we can detect, you know, the changes in chlorophyll level content within the leaf itself. Um, so that's why, of course, it's uh, very important to look at NDRE at the later stage of crop development. Um, so, yeah, that's for NDRE. But perhaps, you know, a couple of comments also from my side before I, you know, give the floor to Lena. Um, I would say that if, you know, guys, if you're working with thick permanent crops and uh, perhaps some other dense crops or even the, you know, later growth stages, for some specific ones, then of course I highly recommend to go with NDRE. But um, let's say if uh, you know if your crop transition from let's say the seed or plantation growth stage to thick canopies in one season, then I would highly recommend using NDVI and NDRE at the same time. Uh, but yeah, NDRE basically also is used for, I would say, more on the intensive side for managing applications uh, throughout the growing season for them crops. Uh, but um, yeah, I think this is it. I pretty much covered NDVI and NDRE. Um, Lena, would you like to take over and tell us more about MSAVI and Renki? Right, so let me share my screen. And I I've been following all your questions, Rim. We have a lot of questions. Oh boy. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll try to cover some of them during during my uh, speech right now, talking about MSCVI and uh, other indices. And afterwards, we'll, we'll have a minute, you know, to answer all your questions because they look really interesting. Yeah, so MSAVI, let's start from the very, very vegetation uh, beginning, from the very beginning, like from the vegetation beginning. And uh, as you know, MSAVI, it is called Modified Soil Adjusted Index. And it is specially designed to minimize the soil influence on canopy spectra. Is you like saying in other words, MSAVI only considers canopy changes, you know, it, it doesn't consider soil and it shows us deviation within the canopy only. So if, if MSAVI values are usually higher than in DVI and we use that at the early stages of vegetation development. It's like one or two months after sowing. And this particular case we have here, this is winter rhapsody, which was, which was sowing in August. And to, let's go back to previous year, the platform allows you to get historical images here from 2019 and five years back. So we'll select just the previous year to see what was happening there. So you can, you can go back. And while we are they waiting, uh, mm -hmm. Right. So some of you are asking about the, the image frequency. So uh, we get, it depends on, on the region where you are located. Because the satellite like, goes all over the whole Earth and it might take from 10, it might take from 3 to 7 days depending on your region. And sometimes where uh, images are covered with clouds more than 50%, 50%, we don't get them into the system. That's why you might have, what? Uh, um, I believe because the cloud masking algorithm is working in the background, right? The one that we have uh, in the system. So that's why we don't show the imagery. Yes, yes, right. So uh, that's why like having our own cloud masking processing, we don't get those images uh, into the system because they're like useless for analytics. Okay, so getting back to our MSAVI index. Uh, the crop winter rhapsid was sown in August and let's zoom a bit in to see what was happening there in August. Uh, we'll switch off the soil moisture for a moment in order not to confuse you. And here, let's select the closest image within two months after sowing, and we'll select in October 15th here. So it's been it's been a um, month and a half since when. And what we see here, you can see that uh, in DVI showing like the red values, very low values, and it's something that confuses you. It's not clear. So okay, what it means for seedlings. And then here we are switching to MSAVI. 
to uh, minimize the soil influence. And here, what we see is that in the northern part of the field, the color is actually uh, green, which means that the development in the northern part really differs from the development in the south part, which is like more, uh, which is more whitish here. And right, so and you can see that the whitish part takes about 70% of the field, and it's a lot. And we can understand that the, the field is actually heterogeneous and it's something is happening. The seedlings are developing in the northern part better. So what would may, might be the reason? And if you pay attention, you know, to the analytics below, and we can notice that from August until September, there were no precipitations at all. And also we can uh, click on root zone soil moisture to see that the soil moisture level there was critically low, it's like 13% or even 12%. And as you know, rapeseed is really sensitive to the soil temperature and soil moisture, especially during sowing period. So this is something that where you should pay attention. So that might be the reason of poor development of the seedlings. Right, so uh, the client in this case, he detected these changes, these deviations at early stage, and they had ch chance to resow their crop. So the platform allows you, uh, you know, to detect changes at the early stages and do something with them. So that's it about MSAVI, and uh, we're switching to Indier E. Switching to Indier E, right? Yeah, um, Lena. Before you, um, you know, uh, jump in um, about the other index, I just wondering. So, um, is there like a normal value when we are looking at different indices for crops, like you know, winter wheat or any kind of crop out there? Is there like a certain number I can, I should stick to, uh, to know that my crop is actually doing really good? Right. Uh, very good question. And I believe some of you also had this kind of question there in the chat. You were asking so. If I see, you know, in DVI value, which is 0.8, what it actually means for me, um, I can answer this. You should understand, and I want to highlight attention here, that indices like in DVI, in DRE, they are created uh, with com for comparative analysis. So it doesn't actually mean, if you see like 0.6 or 0.4 value there, it actually means nothing if you don't if you don't know your field and you can only tell from the image like here like i was showing you that there is some difference in vegetation but what it means we can tell it so uh this is something that you can gain uh using deductive methods like going into the field opening your NDVI uh, images and compare. So, okay, I have here 0.4. What it actually means for my crop? Is it like winter wraps, it corn, wheat? What it actually means for the weather conditions that I have there, for the type so the, for the soil type that is there? Uh, so if you are just like really new uh, to these kind of platforms, you will need to spend at least one season, you know, to understand what those values actually mean for you and for your particular crop. So this question is something that only you can answer them, considering your weather conditions, soil type, and uh, activities there, uh, perhaps irrigation if you're if you're doing this. Yes. So this is very very good question. And switching back to India E. Let me let me is explain here. So in DVI, for your better understanding, in DVI uses red uh, spectrum and near infrared, and red spectrum it penetrates only the canopy, and it can use and, and it can show the picture only in terms of the canopy. When in DRE, it is using um, red age. Uh, red age channel and it penetrates deeper than the canopy and it can show you can give you more understanding and about, about the real biomass presented on your field and in DVI and in DRE they are using simultaneously so uh, here in this field we have winter wheat uh, and we have image from June 27 so those indices are used uh, during um, in the middle of the vegetation development and if we are switching to NDVI, I want to show you 
the difference. So if you if you know your field and you see that NDVI is showing not really like the real good picture uh, or it's not real picture as you see directly in your field, you probably need to compare it with other indices. So here we can see that NDVI shows pretty good picture, right? And when we switch to NDRE, like, except this uh, spot here in, in the center, and we switch to NDRE, and you can see that uh in comparison in comparison to higher vegetation we have like poor one in the middle it is good but it is worse following this vegetation changes in the next images so we go back for example not go back just we go to july 5th you know to understand well okay did my field changed and what we can see here in dre actually showing like homogeneous values and it doesn't look like truth. It sometimes happens because indices are really sensitive to um, some noise, you know, atmospheric noise or something. And you should consider it. So in this case, we can switch to red edge chlorophyll. Red edge chlorophyll, it shows you the chlorophyll um, amount presented in, in the plants and uh, it sometimes can be different from from NDVI and NDRE because it uses uh, it uses channels which are like designed to understand the content of the chlorophyll in the field and what we can see here the picture is totally different red edge chlorophyll showing really low values and chlorophyll is directly connected with the nitrogen and that's mean that probably means that your plants are lacking uh nitrogen yeah so real quick here note um so as far as i know like around 30 percent uh or approximately 30 percent of the total nitrogen is always or usually applied at the beginning you know of the crop let's say when you have the sowing date or as soon as the crop emerges you know you apply that 30 percent content of nitrogen so does that mean in this scenario that the nitrogen level was not like if the we or the client or let's say the farmer of this field did not apply the right amount of nitrogen and that's why they started having problems in this field yeah that's this is a good question yeah it might be the problem because we know that uh, nitrogen is applicable at the early stages because it uh, digests better with plants that time. Uh, it might be the reason. Uh, and also, also, you know that nitrogen level falling down after heavy rains. So I would recommend you to use red age chlorophyll uh, after rains, like checking the level and compare it to NDVI and NDRE in, in values. And also, uh, we, uh, yeah, I, I remember this question about variable rates. We do have a uh, variable rate application map where you can build them. And for nitrogen, you can use red age chlorophyll, you know, to build your maps for nitrogen variable application based on red age chlorophyll. Yeah, so that's it about about indices. Yeah. Um, I think, Lena, we have some very interesting questions okay. that I think maybe, you know, we can just take a little break here and answer some of them. Um, so let's see. The first one or the most, I would say, commonly used question is about soil moisture. And uh, yeah, you guys have asked us, how do we calculate? So if you see here in the platform, we have two levels of soil moisture. We have root zone level and we have surface level. Uh, usually to calculate the soil water content, we use a system of interconnected moisture and heat flow equations. Um, so basically we look at data like historical data recorded and also forecasted. So we have access to historical data, as Lena said, for the past 10 years. Plus we have access to forecast data for let's say for the next 14 days. So we look at this meteorological data, air temperature, humidity, amount of precipitation, and even soil parameter. And then we are able to model that using our you know, equations and display the soil moisture content. Now, um, the surface level is usually down to, as I mentioned, to five centimeters and root zone is down to 60. But now uh, root zone is a little bit different. Um, so it's calculated by taking, or I would say the amount of water uh, in the roots or considering, I would say the plant transpiration rate, we take also into consideration root length and also the current soil moisture that we have from the surface level. 
and that's how we uh, are able to uh, model soil moisture for two different sort of uh, kinds. So we have surface and again root zone. So I hope that answers um, soil moisture question. Um, yeah, maybe Lena, um, answer the next one. Uh, I wanted to add here. So in case you are in that region where you don't have like weather station close to your fields and it's not showing you know the real picture, the soil moisture we're taking from radar satellites, so it actually measures it there, and uh, you can rely on that uh, in case you don't have like you know good source uh, of weather near you. Yeah, and uh, answering the question that I have here. Um, yeah, can you see, use this to see wheat pressure? Yeah, that's something that I didn't cover uh, uh, with the MSAVI. Actually, MSAVI, you can use uh, after harvesting to track, uh, to track weights there, or like, you know, in early spring for uh, spring crops, like to detect weights there, right? Yes, yeah, uh, probably I'll take the next question. Um, so this question is from Einar, I believe. Um, so do government industries and suppliers have the same access as the farmer? Um, yes, well, actually, you know, when you're using our platform, everybody has, you know, basically global access to all the fields around the world. So you can basically monitor all, all sorts of fields. Of course, this will depend on the project. So for what we are showing you right now is something that is like out of the box. Um, if uh, you are, uh, you know, you want to do, for example, crop classification, yield prediction, of course, that kind of data would be, uh, well, classified, uh, you know, that will only be available to the customer that, you know, requires these kind of projects. So if you have these kind of projects that, you know, you want to know, maybe estimate yield prediction or yield forecast, for example, for uh, corn or sugar, uh, sugar cane or whatever it is, then, of course, send us the details, the details at sales at eos.com and of course we'll try to come back to you with the details on how we know we can work together in order to provide you with the with the yield for example estimations um yeah and maybe another question or um yeah concerning um sorry switching the sound on um concerning this question about governments industries and suppliers uh yeah like um the thing to add here uh, if you're talking about the data from the data uh, data processing view here, like no one has access to to your data that you are processing there, to the records records that that you leave there in the platform. Everything is separated. So if it is question about like you know data protection or data processing, yeah, like you have different totally different accounts running on different Amazon servers which are protected and like you are the only person who has access to your data and yeah i wanted you know quickly uh you were asking about variable fertilizer rates and that's something i, I wanted like to show you uh real quick uh here here like we have a tab which is called zoning and that's where you can you can build your variable rates uh, maps based on a single image, which is usually, you know, enough for nitrogen application or something. So you just select uh, the index that you want to analyze and select like the image, uh, cloudless one, and select the number of zones. And you just pl press calculate, and we have like you know different zones there. So this one is working for nitrogen uh, variable rate application, and also we do have productivity maps. The productivity maps are built based on, you know, several images through the season and it, they show you the quality of your field. It, it answers your question whether it is homogeneous or more heterogeneous. Do like, do I have to apply variable rate applications there and everything? So first time it usually takes time to calculate it. But yeah, that's it answering the question about variable rates. And I think we'll answer other questions later. Yeah. And now, okay, Reem, could you please help us to sum everything up? Um, sure. So basically, uh, we, you know, we have uh, showed you four indices, basically, uh, the one that are available in the platform. Uh, we will be covering uh, a few others in a little bit, uh, but basically, we so. 
in order, let's say, to know which cup to begin with or which index to use in order to understand, you know, or, or where to start, let's say, right? So you added your field and you don't know which index to start with. So my recommendation is to start with MSAVI, so MSA VI, so which is, this is very useful in order to understand the earliest stages of plan development. Um, and then uh, moving on, you can start or you can check NDVI, so again, just to show you the active sort of stage or the growth uh, development, how, you know, how the field or how the crop is behaving in the field. Uh, then uh, you can move to NDRE. And uh, of course, it's, recommend, uh, it's highly recommended to use NDRE along with NDVI in order to understand the sort of later growth stage development of your crops. Um, and yeah, and of course, Reiki uh, to monitor just say the chlorophyll content, uh, just to show you the the signs, you know, of um, how healthy the crop is in the field. Uh, we'll be covering indices uh, like uh, EVI and others just in a little bit. But before we do so, I just wanted to bring your attention to something that we didn't discuss earlier, which is, as you can see on the platform, we have something called growth stages. Um, so maybe Lena, do you want to? Do you yeah. Have yeah, I so, can share my screen to show it. Yeah, so um, we have also growth stages, but we are not going to be covering uh, all the details regarding growth stages. But as you can see here, we can understand uh, at what stage the crop is at the moment. So uh, for now, we have growth stages available for, uh, I would say, up to seven crops, including soya beans, corn, spring barley, um, wheat, uh, and a few others in selective countries. Uh, but basically, we are able to understand uh, cotton too. Yes, it's included. Uh, but uh, so we can start by understanding, you know, how the crop is behaving, uh, starting, let's say, from leaf development, tillering, booting, until fruit development. Um, but of course, um, maybe some of you is wondering like how this data is calculated. So growth stages, we just look at the overall, you know, we, so our, we have our own, you know, engineers like scientists and uh, PhD doctors who study, you know, uh, the each crop type, how it behaves, you know, in certain temperature or under certain conditions. And uh, we correlate that data by looking at the temperature. So weather data, the active, uh, the daily active example of some temperature, the sum of active temperature, I'm sorry, um, weather data, soil moisture. Also, we look at NDVI or other indices in order to understand. So in this scenario, as you can see in the platform, when you look, when you click on the first or just over your mouse on the first, let's say, lead development. So lead development started happening just a few weeks after we just planted the crop. So here we understand that actually the data correlates with uh, what we have. Of course, we're going to be uh, with the NDVI, I mean. Um, of course, I think uh, we can't really cover growth stages in one webinar because it's going to take a long time. So I think perhaps in the future we can dig in a little bit deeper into growth stages, uh, perhaps even soil moisture, because I think this is very common. Uh, these are like, you know, very common requests. So probably we're going to be covering them uh, later on. But I just wanted to, you know, to say that we actually uh, have this in the platform and we can, you know, uh, show different growth stages development for different sorts of crops. Um, but uh, yeah, so before I give the floor to Lena, I think, you know, we talked about the, you know, the the pros of using um, our indices, uh, but we didn't discuss perhaps the cons, I would say, and there are a few cons. So the first one, of course, when you're working with NDVI, um, as you noticed earlier, when we were looking and analyzing the field in, uh, in Canada, we had a lot of snow, but uh, the NDVI was not able, sort of, we were not able to identify uh, what's this, you know, what's the state of the crop. So the NDVI was pretty much flat in the area. So of course, NDVI, as I've seen, is sensitive to these kind of noise. So clouds, snow, uh, you know, sun wave angle, and all of this, you know, um, affects uh, us, you know, affects the, you know, the indices, and we are not really able to understand what's going on in the crop. So yeah, that's one weakness. Also, another one is um, it's actually not very relevant when we are talking about yields because you know when the yield depends on small fruits, especially for plants that has a lot of leaves, so like strawberries. So of course, in DBI also, uh, which I would say a con in this kind of scenario. Um, yeah. Yeah. So uh, let me let me take it from here because like related to our next huge topic which is like, I, I, I saw your question about why don't we, why don't we use A, V, E, V, E, I, or other indices. Um, we do updates every two weeks. So 
please send us what kind of indices you'd like to see in our platform and we'll do it for you. And now, yeah, I'm going to cover like topic about ALAI. This is like complex and difficult topic, so be ready. <laughs> and I'll try to do my best to explain it. And I think we'll have another, uh, another session about yield prediction where I will cover this topic like uh, in detail. But now, uh, just given you understanding, you know, what is the difference between NDVI and other indices we've, we've been talking about and LEI. So uh, the, one of the weaknesses of NDVI that it's actually not a quantitative measure. That's something that I told you uh, before. It's more about a comparison of vegetation density between fields, you know, within a field, for example, where you can say, okay, this here I have more dense vegetation and here like poor, poor one. Uh, it's good to compare it between regions, countries, so scientists are usually using it uh, to compare the yield performance between different countries like in Europe and, and the US, but this is not a quantitative measure. And that's where a leaf area index come in, come in place, yeah? So what is leaf area and why is it important? So uh, leaves are one of the main plant organs and are responsible for the productivity of the plant. And on a larger scale, it is like responsible of an, of an ecosystem or a farm. Uh, and like we should investigate the leaf area index in order to uh, in order to predict yield or in order to optimize uh, yields uh, considering the change in the constant changing of climate. So that's why we, we need it. Yeah, moving forward to this slide. So what is leaf area index? This is the ratio of the leaf area per unit ground area. So if you look at this image, you can see, you can differentiate about 10 leaves that are occupying about 40% 40, 40 of ground area and LEI in this case will be 0.4. And on the next image, you can see like, like about 20 leaves that are occupying about 80% of the ground area. It's like LEI in this case would be 0.8. So it's like when you look in, at the plant from the above, and you can see the number of leaves covering the ground. And uh, scientists are using LEI, you know, to consider uh, crop, uh, to measure crop development at different stages, uh, and then they are using those in crop simulation models to know uh, the, the dynamics of crop development. So uh, LEI is something that telling you about the actual biomass uh, in, in the field. So uh, here you can see, you know, to give you better understanding. So as I told you before, NDVI is using red uh, spec, like red waves, and they penetrate only the canopy. So NDVI only shows you, you know, gives you some knowledge about the plant density on the canopy level. In there, it uses red H uh, channel, which is at the end of the spectrum here, and it penetrates a bit lower. But when we're talking about LEI, it gives you the full picture, you know, the biomass uh, in the field, and it's like, quantitative measurement. And that's something that you can use in the models, uh, climate models, crop simulation models, uh, to, use, to see the development of the plants. And uh, I'll just, I'll be like quick here and I'll just touch those models. So crop simulation models, you've probably heard uh, about uh, Vovost or Promet or this is sad. And uh, those are like simulation models for the quantitative analysis of the growth and production production uh, of annual field crops. This is about what first, and this is how, this is actually the software which helps you to uh, simulate the crop development and uh, can give you like information about uh, yield in the end. So they work pretty much the same. So they have pretty much the same logic. Uh, we supply the model with crop uh, crop data. This is genotype, um, 
of the crop. Sometimes those models require uh, some management data, applying fertilizers or uh, applying pesticides, so some information about management, soil data, the type of the soil is very important, and daily weather. And then when the crop starts developing at the different vegetation stages, we are uh, supporting this, uh, mm, this model with satellite data. Satellite data, data in this case means LEI. So, and uh, we put this LEI index at the early vegetation development and later and later on to get more accurate data, you know, and here, so, for example, if we apply LAI data two months before harvest, we'll get about 70% of accuracy for yield prediction. If we like apply it two weeks before the harvest, we'll, we'll have about 90% of yield prediction. Sure. Yeah. And actually, I just want to mention one thing uh, because just considering, you know, when we are doing yield uh, forecasting, you know, yield prediction model, you know, for custom projects, um, it's very also important to uh, acquire some data from your side. So, for example, you know, uh, first of all, we would need data on the current season. So, first of all, we'll need, you know, the coordinate of the fields where, you know, you're interested in uh, doing, you know, yield prediction. Uh, we'll need, you know, the, you know, the coordinates, the AOI, the year, the crop type, the sowing date, which is extremely important. The more data we have, of course, the more accurate the, you know, the, the more the higher the accuracy will be. So, and again, the same, uh, the closer we are to the harvesting uh, season, the, the, the more accurate the data is. So we'll need also to acquire, you know, sowing date uh, from your side, the soil type, if you have, of course, and the same kind of data, not only for the current season, but also for pre previous seasons as well. Um, preferably, let's say for the past three to four years. So if you have, you know, these kind of uh, requests, please drop us an email and we'll be able to do, you know, yield estimations or yield forecasts uh, for basically whatever crop I would say. Um, yeah, in any country, we'll, of course, we'll have to work together uh, on this in order to, yeah, make it work. Right. Uh, yeah, thank you, Rim. And last, like, breathe out a bit and uh, continue. So this is really, really complex uh, topic. And uh, like EOS, since we have our own research and development team, we can help with LAI estimation because somebody, I, I, I just saw in the chat, somebody asked, asked how we can calculate, uh, how to calculate LAI. So uh, this is not just index that calculates using bands, you know, like in DVI, in, in, in RAD and, and uh, near infrared radiation. So this is a modeling index, and it includes not only bands and it's like complex ones. So in case um, you have in mind like having your yield prediction project, because it can be done on the country, region level, on the field level, that's that should be a teamwork, like supporting yeah. and supplying <laughs> data from from both sides. Yeah, and just really quick. So we had a project with Kazakhstan uh, Ministry of Agriculture, and we were helping them with calculating LEI so they can apply their in their yield prediction models. And since we are talking today not about yield prediction but more about indices, let me show you like the real difference between LEI and DVI. So uh, we have you can see here images from May 1st, June, and July. So yes. LEI should be calculated uh, through like time, time rate range. So it's not something that, that you do once. Um, and you can see the obvious difference between LEI and NDVI. So especially at the early stages. So LEI is more reliable to use in the, those models. So you can see if NDVI um, in May is showing like red values here then because like NDVI is very sensitive to uh, soil reflectance, to atmospheric uh, noise. Uh, it sometimes cannot see like the difference at very early stages when LAI is like actually designed for that. And uh, here you can see the difference between those indices and closer, of course, to the July, to the higher vegetation stages, they're a bit similar. But still, we remember that NDVI is for comparison and LEI is about quantity, yes, the, the, the actual bi biomass in the field. So with LEI, we, ha we can get more reliable and more accurate yield results at the early season. Yeah. 
So that's it about LEI. I think we'll cover we'll cover uh, crop modeling uh, and simulation models later. We'll share our experience within EOS like next webinar, and like we have now to cover. Oh, Rim. <laughs> <laughs> We have to cover now EVI and uh, SAVI. Just one minute. I know that everyone, like, I think tired too, too much information. So what is the difference between a e EVI and SAVI uh, in comparison to NDVI? Actually, they're using pretty much the same uh, bands and pretty much the same formula. The only difference is that there is like there they have in their formula a variable which can range so we can specify this variable depending on uh, on the re like region on the territory and the density of the uh, crop so in in case with evi uh we usually use it to analyze areas of earth of earth with large amount of chlorophyll you know like rainforests uh, it, it works great for a vineyard, so you will see I, I have attached for you um, a research about relationship between EVI and grapevine phenology, so you can check it, so it works great for, wine, for vineyards. And uh, SAVI is vice versa. It is usually used for arid regions, for really dry land regions, and they have this like variable in their formula. And if you have like very dry land, uh, the index will grow, like this variable will grow. But if you have like usual uh, land with usual crop density, uh, this L variable will never change it. And you'll have the same values and in DVI. So yes, if, um, if you know about those indices, if you, and you'd like to have them, uh, you can email us and you'll get them in the crop monitoring like in several next iterations or of course you can calculate them yourself and working with those variables or uh, we have another you know easier way yes Rim? right um, <laughs> yeah so I can perhaps elaborate a little bit more on this so um, I know well actually no no but we work with a lot of clients who are building their own platform or who are using maybe you know your own Maybe you're using your own farm management solution or developing a system from scratch where you're combining not only satellite data, but maybe um, other sorts of uh, maybe systems, let's say uh, track management, system, whatever it is. So um, if you are, uh, you know, you need the, our data, then of course you can use our API and you can extract all the data that is available in the platform. We didn't really dig in the platform today. We just wanted to show you more about the indices um, and, you know, and how to interpret the data um, and, uh, you know, the different visuals that we get uh, when you're looking at the fields. But basically with the API, um, everything is available like in the platform, but there are two additional, uh, I would say, features. The first one is you have access to more satellite imagery. So you have access to uh, not only Sentinel due data that offers a resolution 10 by 10, but also Landsat 7, 8, MODIS and others. Plus you have more indices to work with. And as you can see here in the slide, you don't, uh, so you don't only have access to the four indices that we showed you today, but also to EVI or NDSI, for example, that is snow index, MSI and others. So you can also pull that data, extract it and in incorporate it or integrate it within your own platform. So that's one option or one scenario you can um, go around or maybe, you know, you can uh, go with this approach. Um, yeah, I think uh, this is it. Um, perhaps, you know, uh, we'll, do we have some time maybe to answer a couple of questions? Yeah, I think we can switch our cameras on mm, yeah, just you know, to... and answer several from the chat because they're really interesting today. Yeah. All right. Perfect. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Let me go through. Uh, mm -hmm. um, Okay, when choosing uh, Alejandro, like I hope I spell it right, when choosing fields for agricultural crops, which indexa, indices would be recommended? Uh, right. So, um, considering in DVI, like as we mentioned, in DVI really actually has some like cons, uh, and uh, it usually works great, you know, for some cereals, for really dense crop with 
good density and uh, with the crop um, which like yield performance depends on the leaves so it actually that's why it makes sense you know to monitor this kind of crop and uh, allocate some stressed areas there but if you're talking about vegetables uh, some kind of vegetables like it, it, it also works for a potato uh, but like for for berries uh, for trees in the VI it doesn't always work for those so yes you can see some changes uh, with uh, in the vegetation and so you can allocate some stressed areas but it might probably mean nothing to you because you don't see because uh, those plants are more like 3d 3d model like trees and it, those changes doesn't tell you anything. So you anyway, you need to go into your uh, field and check it. So uh, I would recommend here still, you can try using NDVI because it, it really helps like you know, to indicate some stressed area, but you need to try doing scouting. Go there, open the app, check what it says, like, you know, in DVI value 0, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, and, and check, okay, what it actually means to me with my crop. Yeah. Perhaps um, I'll take question. the other questions, because a lot of you guys, I've noticed in the chat that a lot of you are asking whether, you know, uh, you can leave, you know, whether you can use certain indices uh, like uh, ARVI in the platform itself. So at the moment, as I mentioned, we offer only four indices. However, if you would like to see um, some index in the platform, then we can do that. Um, if you don't see it in the API list, uh, but you have perhaps the algorithm, then of course you can share that with us or just let us know what kind of index you would like to see in the platform. You can reach out to us, sales at eos.com, and uh, we'll estimate you know, um, how long would it take for us to do this. Usually, uh, you know, based on, uh, on what we know, um, usually it takes around, I would say, two, I would say we can add two to three indices a week. Uh, again, depending on uh, where, you know, uh, which country it is or what kind of index you guys want us to incorporate in the platform. So yeah, please leave us an email. Right, and can you help me with that? Yeah. Um, uh, um, where we can find information on active temperatures related to the different types of crops? Okay, I'll, I'll show you. <laughs> Let me share my screen. All right. Yeah, so you... Okay. Uh, we have... Let me select this field, for example, somewhere in Canada. We switch to weather data, and that's where we're showing more detailed weather analytics. And as Rim previously mentioned, we do show accumulated precipitation and some of active temperatures. You can actually specify here the base temperature depending on the crop that you have there. And uh, it's like really easy to follow the correlation between like precipitations and some of active temperatures, uh, considering uh, like the, the, crop, the crop stages. So, and you can understand whether your crop it has reached uh, the number of uh, of temperatures that is required, you know, to transfer to, to the next stage, growth stage. So that's where you can you can compare it. You can compare it. You can follow daily precipitation and daily temperatures uh, in comparison to your uh, growth stages. Right. I hope I answered this question. If you if you meant this, yeah. Uh, anything else, Rin? I think we are running out of time, unless we're going to take one more question. <laughs> one more question. Yeah, so um, I, I see that we have a lot of questions about yeah. uh, about soil moisture and about LAI. Okay, we swear. <laughs> we'll got two other webinars covering soil moisture. We'll show you, like, uh, we'll show you what... Okay, let me... And sharing my screen, uh, how how we get this data, like how we do modeling based on that, on the level like um, that is comprehensible for everyone. And we'll do another webinar covering yield prediction models. You know how we do that in the easy way, so you can understand like what if if you've ever thought about that. So what do we need from your end and like from our end? 
So you wanted to answer one more question then? I think that's it, uh, because yeah. there are so many questions and we really know now which ones do you to answer. So um, we're gonna send the recording um, and the materials that we shared today yeah. to everybody who attended the webinar. Um, of course, um, if you have any questions, do drop us an email. Um, and I hope this has been helpful. Uh, we'll probably pick the next topic, but we're not going to reveal the topic yet. Uh, but uh, we'll, you know, we'll do as Lena mentioned. We will do, um, you know, upcoming webinars for yield prediction, soil moisture, growth stages for different uh, for different crop types in different countries. How we calculate that data? Um, yeah, and of course, if you have any ideas, then do you know do share with us? We would love to hear your opinion on this. Um, yeah. This is it. Uh, thank you so much for your time. I hope this has been helpful. Uh, we'll see you next time. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, everyone. And like, if you want, you can email your questions at sales at eos, uh, eos.com and we'll answer them. So sorry if we didn't cover some kind of questions that were really important. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's it, yeah. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you for thank joining you. us. Have a great Take day care. there, night, Bye. evening, or morning. Bye. Okay.